Some massive allegations might be coming soon involving Justin Bieber, P. Diddy, and Usher. Usher was discovered when he was 14 years old by P. Diddy. In an interview with Oprah Winfrey in 2012, Usher admitted that Puff Daddy had brought him to sex parties. And there's even a video now that's going around. It's on social media. I'm sure everyone has seen it. Where a 15-year-old Justin Bieber is hanging out with a 40-year-old Sean P. Diddy Combs. And, you know, talking about 48 hours together and all this other stuff that, again, is alleged. But it, it is heartbreaking when you think about how young and innocent Justin Bieber was. And again, Usher as well. Usher was a minor. What is he talking about? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Going off. When Ensign's people gone. say that to me, I get a little uncomfortable. <laughs> Where is the love? Hold on, hold on, hold on. We don't want too much love. You know what happened with brother love. You won't believe the that was just released. 50 Cent, the man himself, just revealed the long list of names that are on Diddy's abuse rap sheet. And believe me when I tell you, this exclusive list is not something I expected. I mean, we all know about Cassie, Kim Porter, Rodney Jones, and so on. But the people he name dropped this time are absolutely wild and range anywhere from big name celebs like Justin Bieber and Usher to people like Meek Mill, Mace, and even Jaden Smith. And guess what? Seems like Big Daddy Will Smith was allegedly involved in some of the stuff that to us normal folks is unimaginable. He said everything but the thing that was important. That he know that Will Smith raped Jaden. He raped Bashir and he raped Neek Mills. And you know it, Bilal. 50 Cent's always been throwing shade at Diddy, painting him as shady. He's been dropping hints for years that Diddy might be batting for the other team, despite his public relationships. Lately, 50's been relentless, aiming to expose Diddy's alleged involvement in shady dealings while trying to keep up a squeaky clean image. One real shady move? Diddy inviting a young Justin Bieber to kick it at his mansion for 48 hours, away from prying eyes. Now, inviting a young star over might not raise eyebrows at first, but here's the kicker. Diddy actually claimed legal guardianship over the underage Bieber leaving folks wondering about his motives. Diddy brushed off concerns, thinking he was just flaunting his bond with the rising star, but it just left people feeling uneasy. What's more, from the jump, Diddy promised Bieber a sick ride, leaving everyone wondering what he was trying to cover up by dangling such a gift in front of the young artist. You can peep the clip capturing their unsettling interaction for yourself. So, as soon as you turn 16, you know what I'm saying, I'm gonna let you rock this every time you right. yeah, like, yeah, it's be yours. So, okay. you know, it's a little dusty, but you know, the shot Man. Man. Okay. Okay. All right, so, so I'm going to be driving this yeah, next yeah. year. So check this out. After those 48 hours with Diddy, the deal was Justin gets the keys to that sick ride. Now, a lot of fans are thinking, was that car and mansion the price Justin had to pay for those 48 hours? Because after that time, Justin kept his distance from Diddy, like big time. But you know how it goes. When powerful folks don't get their way, they start throwing their weight around. Diddy tried to pressure Justin, straight up calling him out for not kicking it with him anymore. See, Diddy wanted to flex his influence over these young up-and-comers, make them feel like they got to follow his lead. So, fans figured your Diddy feeling some type of way about not having Justin on his team was a hit to his authority. Now you might be asking yourself, how did Diddy get away with all this mess in plain sight? Well, if Lil Rod's lawsuit is anything to go by, Diddy had a way of keeping folks quiet. He'd use his criminal past to scare him into silence, like some straight up intimidation game. Fans are thinking Diddy might have pulled some real foul moves on Bieber for him to steer clear like that, no questions asked. Poor Justin Bieber, I am certain he abused him physically and psychologically. That's why Bieber went through that angry period of alcohol and deep be. That was probably his own way to, for the first time, feel in control of his life. There is another video where Puff Puff is being a bully. BC Bieber hadn't contacted him in a while, and Bieber responds to him like a scared little boy. And let's not forget about all the clips that have gone viral about Justin at Diddy's party since, like this one where he appears to be doing something strange to NFL star Odell Beckham Jr. Jay-Z and 50 have some deep roots going back to the early days in the game. While Jay-Z and Diddy were tight, 50 wasn't feeling them. So, when the the chance came to take down his two biggest rivals, 50 was all over it. Word on the street is, 50 might have had more than just trolling on his mind when those raids went down, and insiders are saying Jay-Z might be next in line. Now, since all this Diddy drama unfolded, Jay-Z's been keeping a low profile. Seems like he's trying to distance himself, not wanting any of that mess to taint his rep. 
out of sight, out of mind, right? But in the world of celebrities, cutting ties isn't easy, especially with someone who's been there since day one. Anyway, while Diddy was facing his downfall, the entertainment scene got hit with another bombshell. Diddy got snubbed from events despite scoring nominations. And the shock didn't last long because Jay-Z decided to throw shade at his own wife for not winning Album of the Year. I don't want to embarrass this young lady, but she has more Grammys than everyone and never won Album of the Year. So even by your own metrics, that doesn't work. Think about that. The most Grammys and never won an album of the year. That doesn't work. Some of you are going to go home tonight and feel like you've been robbed. After that whole ordeal, Jay-Z was supposedly aiming to grab some headlines. But instead, folks started noticing his absence from the Diddy scene. First off, 50 Cent hit up the internet, asking where Jay was at, claiming Diddy was trying to hit him up. Now, despite the beef between 50 and Diddy, Jay's no-show raises some serious questions. A lot of fans are thinking Jay-Z's absence might have something to do with all those video recordings the authorities snagged during that infamous raid. I mean, there's no way Diddy wasn't recording, and Jay was a regular at his events. In another post, 50 Cent straight up said Diddy ain't bouncing back from this mess. Now it's not Diddy do it, it's Diddy done. They don't come like that unless they got a case. Now this isn't just 50's wishful thinking. Almost all the celeb news channels believe that, including Storm Monroe. Storm has been an industry insider for years, and he is on the same page with 50 Cent when it comes to Diddy's situation. After they are done with Diddy, Jay-Z is up next to be exposed, right? Jay-Z, over the course of his career, and I have to still say allegedly, has done things and allegedly participated in a lot of things that the public would not be happy to know. For some reason, y'all like to conveniently forget. So here's the deal. If Jay-Z's status is threatened, the whole house of cards might come tumbling down. And in this case, rumors are swirling that Beyonce might just call it quits with Jay-Z. Now, there's been gossip about their split for years, but this one's got some weight to it. Just a few months ago, nobody thought Diddy would fall like he did. Now, Storm's got some solid sources in the industry, and this time he's claiming Jay-Z and Beyonce have been living separate lives for years. And let's be real, this wouldn't be the first time celeb couples have been living different lives behind the scenes. Remember Jada and Will Smith? In Hollywood, it's pretty common for couples to stick together until the cons outweigh the pros. Now, let's break down Jay-Z's career a bit. Dude's had his fair share of controversies. You all remember his ties with R. Kelly, right? Well, at least until Kelly got hit with those legal troubles. For context, R. Kelly was a big shot in the music biz who groomed an underage singer, Aaliyah, into marrying him when she was just 15. Creepy, right? But Jay-Z was tight with him until Kelly's past caught up with him. Rumor had it, maybe they had some things in common because there were whispers about Jay-Z getting involved with Foxy Brown when she was underage too. Now, here's the kicker. In the documentary Surviving R. Kelly, Jay-Z refused to take part. While other celebs were opening up about their experiences, Jay stayed quiet. But according to an old 2002 interview with Wendy Williams and Nass, Jay saw a 14-year-old girl come into the studio and sit on R. Kelly's lap during the production of Best of Both Worlds. Wendy even chimed in, saying anyone who's worked with with Kelly witnessed some disturbing stuff. Dame Dash also made headlines for allegedly being against his former artist, collaborating with R. Kelly because of the relationship between his late fiance Aaliyah and Kelly. I remember having the conversation with Aaliyah, and I was like, yo, tell me what happened. And she was like, uh, she just couldn't. What you think I felt? I'm human, bro. I had to look the other way. All these years, publicly that man did a record with that guy that aired my girl that he liked as well, but no one said nothing. So let's keep it real. There's no way Jay-Z didn't know what R. Kelly was up to and still decided to collab with him. It really makes you wonder about the kind of moral compass he's working with. Anyway, since Alia was an up-and-coming artist and R. Kelly was facing some serious allegations, Jay-Z decided to make his move on her romantically. But here's the twist. She ended up falling for Dame Dash, which was a major hit to Jay-Z's ego. And we all remember how unfairly Dame Dash got the boot from the company. Fans think it was all Jay-Z's ego trip that pushed Dame out of the picture. Jaguar, who's been spilling tea about Jay's greed for years, spilled even more saying Jay couldn't handle losing, so he used his power to push Dame out. She said anyone who knew Jay-Z up close would tell you he'd step on anyone if it meant making a buck. She hinted that what Jay really wanted wasn't just an ego boost, but total control over the entertainment biz. And she suggested Dame could have been a threat to Jay's absolute authority, so sooner or later, Jay would have found a way to get rid of him. But then Aaliyah passed away under shady circumstances, leaving fans questioning if Jay had anything to do with it. You see, during that time, Beyonce's solo career 
was struggling while Aliyah was killing it. Over the years, there have been some revelations about the plane crash that took the Princess of Pop's life. Apparently, arguments broke out between Aliyah's crew and the pilot over the plane being overweight. After the crash, it was confirmed the small twin-engine plane was several hundred pounds over its weight limit. Plus, the weight distribution was off, making the plane harder to control once it was up in the air. The last major update came in 2002, when a toxicology report found the inexperienced pilot had coke and alcohol in his system. With all these issues, it looked like whoever was behind it didn't want Aliyah to make it out alive, no matter what. Later, it was also revealed Aliyah was unconscious when she boarded the plane. The cab driver of Aliyah's car said they took her out of the van. She didn't even know she was getting boarded on a plane. She went on the airplane asleep. Sources reckon that since Diddy and Jay go way back, it's very likely Diddy knows all about Jay's alleged role in Aaliyah's passing. Now, circling back to Kelly, we all saw how Jay-Z switched sides when R. Kelly was facing those SA charges. On a side note, remember Beyonce's Lemonade, where that whole Becky with the good hair drama started? Turns out Diddy knew about Jay-Z's cheating ways, causing his wife all kinds of heartaches, and when he was asked about Jay's actions, he allegedly chose to cover for his buddy's affairs. That's what music gives you the power to do, and I think that you know, once you're ready to share it with your fans in the world, then nobody could judge it. You know, they have to accept what it is. And I think, I, th I thought it was dope. Uh, were you surprised? No. Did okay. he put it out there? No, I wasn't. No. I was surprised about Lemonade, but I wasn't surprised about You were. <laughs> if we take a look at Diddy's numerous speeches, since he's become a heavyweight in the music game, we see him giving major props to Jay-Z for his hustle. Just last year, Jay-Z and Diddy linked up to celebrate the notorious B.I.G.'s 50th birthday over the weekend, chopping it up on Twitter. Now, May 21st would have marked Biggie's 50th if he were still with us. The rap game suffered a huge loss when Biggie tragically got taken out in March 97 in L.A. And just months before that, we lost a Another legend, Tupac Shakur, losing two iconic MCs in less than a year, dealt a heavy blow to the rap scene. So on this Twitter spaces hosted by Tidal, Jay-Z, Diddy, Fat Joe, and the crew got together to talk about the impact of Biggie Smalls. Hob dropped some knowledge, saying Biggie and Pac were masters, and his own music production was him being a student of their game, showing love for the culture. He pointed out how the loss of both Pac and Biggie hit the industry hard, with long-lasting effects. He remembered how it was a challenge for all the top artists to step up and fill the void left by these two hip-hop pioneers. Diddy jumped in quick to give Jay-Z props for stepping up and filling that void left by these two heavy hitters, saying, Bro, you filled them shoes though. You came in and we definitely give thanks. You definitely came. And I just know how much Big really looked up to Jay. They looked up to each other. That is crazy. You had to step into the shoes of two people. That's all it was, was those two people. They had things on lock. Hov was coming, but it was like these two cats was just so big. And so, to have all of that come on you and have that responsibility to keep this ish fly and keep the art of it going. I think Hoff kept the art of it going and take where they was at and take it even higher. No doubt Diddy's Lifetime Award was a major milestone and Jay-Z made sure to give it the respect it deserved. He went all out, making it seem like Diddy was the foundation of the whole music game, the pillar the industry's been built on. Kanye even popped up out of nowhere, claiming Diddy was the king of hip-hop who needed to be crowned like yesterday. But now, it seems like the successor to the throne just got knocked off and Jay-Z's nowhere in sight. So, here's the deal. Rumors have been swirling that Jay-Z might have been involved with underage girls, using his power and influence to take advantage of innocent artists. Wendy Williams jumped into the mix, not holding back when it came to talking about Foxy Brown's past memoir. She straight up accused Foxy of having a thing with Jay-Z before he hooked up with Beyonce. And let me tell you, at the time, rumors about Jay's cheating ways were off the charts. Now Foxy later came out saying she didn't want Jay-Z getting involved in the relationship stuff because it just made things look fishy. But Jay didn't listen and dropped a track called Picasso Baby, with verses that pretty much denied any romantic involvement. Now, we've all seen Jay deflecting when it comes to controversies, but his stance on the whole Foxy Brown situation raised some eyebrows. Foxy herself denied dissing Jay-Z or spreading rumors about him being involved in gay intimacy or taking her V-card when she was just 15 and he was 27. In an interview with MTV's Rap Fix Live, Foxy talked about how those false reports affected her. When I got a call about this anonymous blogger that wrote, keep in mind, you and everyone else, this wasn't in Time Magazine, XXL, it was an article, an anonymous blogger that could be named Joe Schmo the Midget hiding behind a computer screen.
Foxy made it crystal clear that her relationship with Jay was purely based on admiration and nothing more. She expressed her disappointment with the rumors circulating, emphasizing that their connection stemmed from both rising from humble beginnings. Plus, it was her cousin, Clark Kent, who introduced them in the first place. In a separate interview, Foxy emphasized that while they both understood the entertainment industry's workings, the rumors about their relationship stopped being amusing when they began portraying Jay-Z in a negative light. She insisted that the Jay she knew never wavered from his character. When Jay directly denied the claims, she allegedly felt responsible for the situation. It's evident that Foxy held Jay-Z in high regard as a mentor, but the feeling might not have been mutual. Now, looking closely at Foxy's statements regarding Jay-Z, they often lean towards portraying Jay-Z as the victim of circumstances he didn't create. But why would a grown man put himself in such situations that could easily be avoided if Jay wasn't allegedly overly friendly with Brown? Fans tend to believe Foxy's feelings of guilt about something beyond her control is a prime example of manipulation. Setting all that aside, since Jay-Z stepped back from the Diddy drama, some other folks have stepped up to play supporting roles. And let me tell you, 50 Cent's been roasting them non-stop. Previously, 50 posted court documents accusing Stevie J of getting cozy with Diddy. Well, 50's not so subtle hinting about their alleged relationship didn't sit well with Stevie J, who took to Instagram offering to handle the trolling in person. Since it's entertainment, let me beat the out of you on TV or something. Don't duck that. I'm calling you out. What you want to do, Curtis? Curtis! In response to Jay's invitation, 50 didn't rush into throwing fists right away. Instead, he hit back by posting screenshots of articles covering Jay's ex-wife, Juseline Hernandez's, past allegations about his orientation. These headlines came from claims made by the reality TV star, suggesting Stevie J had a thing for guys. Now, when 50 initially mentioned Stevie J's name, Jay wasted no time jumping into the comments, trying to get 50 to stop posting about his tarnished image. He said, get your money, Curtis, we know this entertainment, but ain't no truth to that. Guy must be ready to meet his maker. Clearly, 50 Cent didn't take Stevie J's offer to throw down too seriously, cause the Queens rapper fired back with even more trolling aimed at the producer and his buddy, Sean Combs. The BMF executive producer hit up his Instagram, sharing screenshots from past reports about Stevie's ex, accusing him of some seriously messed up stuff, like being interested in his own kids. He also dropped a screenshot from a recent TMZ report showing Stevie and Diddy chilling together after Diddy's cribs got raided by Homeland Security in a serious investigation, and in a video he posted with DJ Self on social media, 50's all jokes, playing the role of a bouncer, and yelling, come step to me shorty, then he throws a flurry of punches before proudly declaring, guys talking about they wanna fight me, my ish is sharp, get out of here with that bullish, I hope you get past security, let's keep it real, boxing is right up 5th's alley, he's been in the ring since he was just 11, and even dabbled in boxing promotion, signing big names like Yuri Orkis Gamboa, Billy Dib, and Olympic medalist Andre Durrell, Jay seems to to have forgotten that Fifth's got a real street background. Anyway, 50 kept on posting about Stevie, sharing a bunch of headlines hinting that Stevie might be gay and had been dealing with rumors long before the lawsuit, but it seems like Stevie J wanted to clap back at 50. He went off during a new interview with TMZ, addressing the allegations against his longtime friend, Diddy. Stevie started by defending Diddy, saying he hadn't seen any of the behavior accused in those recent lawsuits. Fans are just tired of all this stuff coming out. They figure there's no way J or Diddy would ever face proper consequences if they were convicted of all the crimes they've been accused of. I don't care what these guys do as consenting adults. I'm only concerned about whether there are kids involved and if people were de-ed and aid. There's also whether people have been unalived by these creeps. If all their crimes are proved, they'd probably face death row. So, what do you think? Was 50 Cent the one to spill the beans to the authorities? Or is something else happening behind the scenes? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on any new videos. And until then, fam, keep it real.